Yeah, this game was so good. We should play it again next time. Oh, by the way, have you finished working on your game? You've been talking to me about it for months. When will I be able to try it? Well, actually soon. I've made a lot of progress so far. I'm halfway through writing the rulebook. I've already made a first prototype, but I need to work with someone who can do the illustrations for me now. I'm actually thinking maybe I should launch a crowdfunding campaign soon. I've watched many videos on the benefits of crowdfunding. I need the funds to make this game happen. Oh, okay, that's cool. I don't know much about crowdfunding though. Do you think it's not too early to do it since your game is not finished yet? Um, I don't think so. Since I need the funds to move forward with my game, now is probably the good moment, right? Yeah, maybe. So, how will you do that? Do you know how much money you need exactly? What your campaign will look like? Or where to start? Um, I have no idea. Hello to you, tabletop enthusiast. I'm Celine, brand company manager for Game on Tabletop, the crafting platform for gamers by gamers. Welcome to our new series of video called Crafting Consulting. I'm with Laura today who is the COO for Game on Tabletop. She is my colleague. I've been working with her for more than a year now, and she's working every day with game creators to help them with crowdfunding and with their crafting projects. Hello to you, tabletop enthusiasts. Uh, I always wanted to say this phrase as well because it's Celine. <laughs> really happy to be here as well and be able to talk to you today uh, with my colleague Celine. So you might be aware that I already did a video before about crowdfunding and the benefits of crowdfunding for creators, but I wanted to do a new video with Laura because if you've watched this video, maybe you thought, okay, crowdfunding might be for me, but if you've never done crowdfunding before, where do you start? So I was wondering, maybe let's pretend that I am a creator and that I've never done any crowdfunding campaigns before, but I have a game that I want to crowdfund. What would you suggest me doing to start? Uh, first of all, obviously, I'd be super happy to see that you're into game design now and that you're working on your own project, Sully. But for every creator, whether it's you, whether it's you, uh, always start with the why. Figure out why you want to crowdfund your game. So obviously the first is the question is why do you want to make a game? So that has reasons. But then also why making a crowdfunding campaign is the way you want to go is a very important part of the whole process. Uh, because there can be a lot of different reasons why you will want to crowdfund a game. It might be uh, because you don't have the funds to actually go into production. It might be because um, yeah, you, you want to be able to live an adventure with uh, all of the different uh, people out there that are going to back your project. Maybe it is because you really want to create a whole company. Uh, there can be so many different reasons um, that also vary a lot, whether or not you're a small creator or you're already an established publisher uh, out there. So figuring out the why is where you need to start because uh, conceiving your crowdfunding campaign is very different depending on your why, uh, right? So that's going to be the very first thing I say to people. Sit down, figure it out, write it down. Why crowdfunding? It's also, uh, sometimes people come to me and they're like, okay, crowdfunding, I want to do a crowdfunding campaign because everybody does crowdfunding campaigns, right? Um, and that's not necessarily a good enough start because it takes a lot to do <laughs> a crowdfunding campaign and you need to be aware of it. When you ask yourself the question, why do I want to do a crowdfunding campaign? Uh, you will actually start thinking about the different possibilities, the different reasons, uh, and you will actually realize the whole spectrum, what goes into a crowdfunding campaign and you will be able to, to, to be to be more assertive of the fact that I want to do a crowdfunding campaign because I want to be able to do it all on my own or I want to be able to make the product even better than I would be able to do to make it with my own funds. And I think you, Celine, did a great video on, on that topic that I recommend all of you check out about different reasons uh, of the why you would want to do a crowdfunding campaign for your project. And I know that normally, well, I see that when a new game creator contacts you, uh, you normally have a call with them and you have a call to ask them different questions on their game and why they want to do crowdfunding. So what do you actually ask them and what's important for you to know when you start with a new game creator? 
Uh, absolutely, I'd actually spend a lot, quite a lot of time um, having a first call with creators at least. Sometimes we'll have uh, several calls, but I try to make the time, or me or one of my colleagues obviously, try to make the time to have that call because what's really in interesting for us is that we will be then be able to ask some specific questions uh, that go a, a long way and then also will help me know where you're at, you as a creator, okay, what are your struggles, what are the things that you're totally fine with, what you're really excelling at, uh, how can we best help? And so one of my very, very first questions is even like, before I will even go in depth into introducing what I do, what my work is, what Gaiman does, what we do as a crowdfunding platform, uh, I will always ask a question, can you pitch me your project? And by pitch me the project, I don't mean only pitch me your game, but also pitch me your project, what you see in a crowdfunding campaign. And there's no right or wrong. There's no perfect way to make a pitch, but that pitch allows me to know, yeah, to learn a lot about a project, about a person, about a team. Um, it allows me to understand whether or not uh, you as a creator are aware of your project, of what you're actually uh, funding out there, where you're at in your conception. And it also helps helps me to see whether or not uh, it, it already stands out by itself, right? Uh, you're, you're absolutely going to compete with hundreds of new games that are being funded every week, every month, every, every year, right? We have thousands of new games re releasing all the time. Uh, and and so obviously you need to find your sweet spot. You need to find out what makes your game special, what makes your game great, or your campaign great, right? Yeah. What sets your campaign apart? Uh, and so that's a lot of uh, that we will that that, that I will figure out uh, in a, um, through a pitch. And then there are obviously a lot of other questions that I will ask. I will ask about. Uh, timeline, right? Uh, do you already have a specific date set? What are we working with? How do you already have artwork? Do you, what does your team look like? Um, yeah, what what are you expecting? Also, how do you define success? What is what is a successful project for you? Is it raising ten thousand dollars, or is it having a uh, hundred people on your campaign? Is it just having a fun time, right? Uh, how do you define success? How do you uh, define for failure? How would you describe your project? has failed um, because it's important for me to know where are your expectations, where do I also need to be especially aware of, hey, uh, be careful about that or maybe you need more insight, maybe I can suggest something or where I can feel, okay, this feels all set up, right? That, that feels all um, figured out rightly. So um, yeah, that's basically where we will start out with a discussion. Okay, so I was also wondering, what do you think are the most important elements or things that a creator needs before launching a campaign? The most important parts that go <laughs> into your conception of a crowdfunding campaign before you launch is know the why. We talked about that. Uh, know the what. What are your what are you offering? What is your project? What is your product? Have your team. Know who you're working with. Are you working alone? Are you working with other people? Make time, it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, and launch when you're ready, when you're ready to launch and when you're ready to go ahead. And also having amazing artwork is gonna <laughs> break you out a long way. Okay, for sure. And do you think there's actually an ideal moment to launch a campaign? Maybe does the, the game needs to be finished before launching a campaign or it's not necessary? Uh, so that's, yeah, picks up one of the things that I said just before is launch when you're ready. And I know that's a very vague statement, <laughs> but it's actually really true because I don't think that there are a lot of reasons um, that should push you to rush the launch of a campaign versus getting it right. Figuring out what you need, where you're at, what you're still missing uh, and what you could maybe improve on it. And so there's a lot of it in, in there, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not the same for every campaign, but yeah, you should know uh, what your game is about. You should have a play test it, it should be out there. Obviously you should know what your um, manufacturing quotes are gonna look like, right? And if you don't have all of your quotes figured out, um, I don't think it's a very uh, helpful way to still launch, right? Because you said, oh, I've fixed that date, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna launch. If you don't know your production costs, that's gonna hit you harder. And I think it's, it's often uh, much wiser to decide, hey, I'm gonna push my date 
for a bit because I don't have all of my things figured out yet. Um, and then obviously there are going to be a couple of people that are going to be, oh, but I was so looking forward to, to backing your project right now, right? But if they're so invested that they're going to uh, vocalize that, then they're also going to com come back later on if you launch later on. So uh, there are a couple of reasons why you might want to need to uh, to stick to a date. Uh, it's often seen for bigger companies, right? Because they will have like all of their marketing set up and they will have the whole company ar uh, built around that sales channel. So the stakes are not the same. So in that case, for instance, you might need to launch at a specific date or if you want to have it coordinate with some external efforts, if you're producing it at the same time as some other pu publishers doing something similar and stuff like that, uh, right? You want to have, if you have that, that kind of collaboration, it might make sense to rush. But other than that, it's about uh, launching when you're ready um, and trying to get, yeah, to figure out as much as is important for your product to make it ready, right? There's no 100% rule that will work out for everyone. But yeah, it's you need your manufacturing quotes. Your game needs to be play tested. Uh, it would be awesome if you have some reviewers talking about it, have some amazing artwork, get your uh, shipping costs and fulfillment solutions figured out, uh, build your community, uh, target your audience, all of those things obviously you need to bring in and uh, you should, should take the time for that, even if that means pushing your date potentially. Okay, so you were talking about the quotes. Do your quotes uh, define your founding goal? How do you define the funding goal? Uh, obviously, quotes are a big part of defining your funding goal, but it's not at all. It's not the only thing. Obviously, okay. it's not the only thing, and it should not be. Uh, there are a few rule of thumbs that you should be calculating. There are um, a couple of uh, metrics that you might uh, might be looking into, but projects are inherently so different that every project will have its own challenges, its own costs, its own teams and uh, additional costs to support, right? There is no one way for everyone to figure out a funding goal. There's also a very high psychological factor that goes into a funding goal in the sense of uh, sometimes you have a very ambitious project and that ambitious project is going to cost a lot of money. But having a very, very high funding goal can also be um, hurting your project because it can be discouraging for backers. Backers can see, if they see like $100,000 for a funding goal from a creator that it's not yet, yet as well known, maybe maybe they will be there and saying, oh, $100,000 is gonna be a tough, tough number to hit, right? Uh, and, then, and then they might be more wary about supporting your project in the first place, whether if you have a lower funder go funding goal, they won't be asking that much of these questions and they will go for it. And maybe you will raise $200,000 in the end, right? In that case, the $100,000 $100, were actually uh, an attainable goal. But there's a lot of psycho psychology that goes into that and it's, it's, it's finding the best balance in there. Okay. Obviously, again, uh, a lot of campaigns are different and a lot of struggles are different. So you will be having creators that are going into into that with a very different standpoint. Big companies, they will have their own funds. It's okay for them if they, they finance only the quotes, right? And not the additional labor because they're going to be able to uh, sell the additional stock and then, <laughs> then earn their own margins later on because they have distribution set up and they have all of these other um, elements that they can work with. If you're really starting out, uh, you might not have all of those. Uh, and so it might actually really matter that you get the uh, exact amount of money because you cannot invest anything from your yeah. own money, right? Um, and in that case, it's difficult to find that perfect balance because production is is always going to be expensive. <laughs> so um, there's always going to be a high cost. So in that case, it would be about figuring out what would be the lowest possible version of it, uh, right? Maybe even like, like if you're printing a book, thinking about um, maybe I could do it just in black and white, right? It might not be the book I'm looking forward to, but I would be willing to still go with a black and white version because it would still make my my game be, a re be realistic. And that will allow you to ba maybe say, okay, maybe I need only $5,000 and not 10,000 that I would need for a, a full color print. The difference between <laughs> black and white and full color is not that intense, <laughs> but there is a difference if you're printing in that, right? Uh, and so basically, uh, skate it a bit down and then see if that uh, allows you to build something you still feel great about, uh, 
uh, you still feel uh, excited about. And then hopefully that's going to transform into a lot of engagement and enthusiasm and will bring your project even higher and make it into like your absolute dream version of the game. Um, and so there's a lot about metrics and I think uh, that's that's a whole topic that we might need to discuss in a, in a further further video maybe at some point because it's very tricky to really be making sure that you're calculating all of those metrics uh, um, correctly. But there, is, there are things that you can like really start out, right? You could say, uh, okay, if I need $10,000, my product is gonna cost X. So what does that actually look like in terms of numbers of people? Um, uh, do I need to have 100 people? Do I need to have 500 people? Where am I at? How many people do I know around me that would just go ahead in some back? It could be your family, it could be your friends, right? Uh, but still, right, these people, are they going to be there day one? Are they going to inject that money right, right away? Um, and if that number is like really, really far away from the number you need to, to hit your minimum funding goal, uh, then maybe it's time to either work more on communication, building a community, getting more people excited, or maybe also think, okay, let's let's look at this slower. Let's look at this in a in a more conservative way. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not gonna go as high, but I'm still gonna make it a product that, that I can stand behind and that I'm proud of being able to make. And then hope that it's it's going to go even higher. Obviously, that's what we all strive for. Yeah. But it's not what always happens. And I think crowdfunding should be about. Uh, having fun, living the adventure, having success, building long lasting success. Uh, and so thinking, of, taking the time to think about all of these things uh, beforehand is definitely worth it. Yeah, I remember once you told me that um, your funding goal should be um, the point where you feel like it's success for you. Uh, it might be different from one creator to another. And um, yeah, so I feel I think that if it's a success, even if it's a small number, if you feel like, okay, my dream of printing my game um, has become true, then it's great. Figure out the why, figure out what yeah. success means for you, what failure looks like for you. So we actually talked about creating the community and marketing. So do you think um, a creator really needs to have maybe marketers or crafting specialists around them to work with them on their campaign? Or can a creator just do a campaign all himself. So that's a broad topic as well. And I think it's actually a topic that's not discussed enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, because um, you have to understand that if you're going onto the adventure of crowdfunding your project, you are actually building a company, right? So there are different versions about doing it, going about that. Some some will just create their own one person company. It's not going to be their goal is not necessarily to become a huge uh, new publisher later on, right? And there are others where that goal is more present. But still, even if you're doing it on your own, uh, you will still need to address all the all the questions, right? There's still going to be so many different elements that go into it. So you will be talking, obviously, you will be talking about game design. Awesome, great. But you will have to look at illustrations and art direction, even if you're not your illustrator yourself. But still, somebody needs to say how the game should be looking like. Uh, you will obviously be talking about financials. Uh, how much is this going to cost? Who's going to be paid how, how much? Um, how much money do you need to raise? But you're also going to talk about marketing, building a community. Uh, fulfillment, logistics, distribution, sales. Uh, there's so much that goes into doing a crowdfunding campaign. And that where, that's where it's very important to ask a question about a team. There are creators out there that do it all by themselves. But uh, many of the, the crowdfunding campaigns that you can see out there, generally it's a team. It can be a very small team. It can be like uh, three or four people. I, I'd say four people is a great way to start out. Maybe they're not all like employees or not all necessarily be paid that much, right? But it can be also just a healthy support, support system that you have around you, being able to talk to your friends, family, significant others about your project, being able to share the struggles, uh, the ups and downs that you're going yeah. through is just so worthwhile, right? It's going to be a roller coaster ride. It's going to be full of emotions. It's not all going to be amazing. Uh, and it can be very draining. It can be exhausting. And acknowledge that. Acknowledge that right from the start. So I'd always encourage you, try to find a group of people around you and build a team. Um, 
in whichever form that will look like. And if you go out there alone, make sure you're aware that you're gonna have to wear a lot of different hats. So yeah, uh, if you're going out there yourself, you're gonna be a game designer, an accountant, uh, an art director, uh, the logistics person, you're gonna be uh, the customer service representative, the play tester. You're gonna do all of those different subjects and you should be aware of that and you should embrace that and look forward to uh, see all of that, those different elements. But then again, it's also an opportunity to live an amazing adventure and be able to see all of those different bits and pieces in your project, right? And you can then say, hey, uh, I, I've seen how the financials came together for the project, even if you maybe didn't do it yourself. So I think we can talk now about marketing. I mean, that's what I know best. <laughs> and I know that marketing is really important for a campaign, for a crafting campaign. So obviously it is mandatory. What needs to be the budget for marketing um, for a campaign for creators? Obviously, there is no answer that I can give you that's going to be uh, an answer that will work for every campaign out there. Um, the most important part is to figure out what makes a game special. Okay, figure out what makes a game special. If your game is not necessarily uh, something super innovative, that doesn't mean that that's not going to work, right? Like in role-playing games, you will have tens of thousands of different fantasy settings that are out there and a lot of them exist next to each other. Obviously there are some that are better known than others, but it doesn't mean that others aren't successful, right? It doesn't mean that your game is uh, needs to be entirely unique, but you need to be able to still say, okay, that's what makes this a game special. And you need to be able to build that into a marketing message. And then you can look into that, uh, how you want to craft it around, right? There, lots of different ways to do to go about that it's obviously there's the the solution of going to the more conventional marketing aspect right doing facebook ads doing uh, social media promotions doing i don't know a billboard <laughs> uh, no but you could be advertising in magazines on youtube channels and stuff like that obviously that's going to be paid promotional um, advertising you could also uh, go the route of more of an organic approach so like figure out if there's something cool and amazing about your game and then i don't know uh, have something uh, whether or not it's in a physical presence which is currently quite difficult <laughs> given the global pandemic that we're yeah. in but it can also be online right it could be an interactive event that people can participate in and so then they could get to know about you and your projects and your elements so and that might not necessarily have a high cost uh, but it could be uh, time intensive for you, for instance. So it might not be very financial cost, more more on the time side. And sometimes, yeah, you can get creative. You can invest into in some specific game, like a, an amazing illustrator that you love to work with and you know that they have a great community. And maybe you make a very fun, creative collaboration with that person and maybe that's going to gonna gonna reach out right so there's no necessarily a fixed budget for it it's more about having a sense of the importance of marketing marketing is gonna carry your project talking about your project is gonna make it go beyond uh, having a community building an audience having people that that look forward to your project that are willing to invest their own money in there that's what you need to, to build uh, as a hype, as a buzz, right? People need to be aware of your project. They need to be talking about it. They need to want it. <laughs> I want this product now. Um, right, so yeah, there's no number I can give, but I can definitely tell you that's a very important subject. Yeah, so I was also wondering, is there sometimes unrealistic ideas that game creators can tell you? And in that case, what would you suggest them to maybe adjust their expectations? So the one thing I hear the most maybe is kind of like a perception that crowdfunding is easy. Okay. Uh, crowdfunding is everything but easy. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. Um, and so that's really the expectation that you should be aware of. Uh, you cannot just launch your crowdfunding campaign uh, during your midday break and then just leave and then just check in the next day. You need to be there, you need to be present, you need to uh, adjust and react to what's happening. Uh, and so that's the biggest unrealistic expectation that I sometimes see is, oh, uh, crowdfunding is just money thrown at you. It's not. It's a sales channel. It needs to be thought out. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of emotion. Uh, and so, yeah. 
get ready for the adventure if you're if you're ready to go in there. Okay, so my last question for uh, today's video would be: um, Is crowdfunding actually made for everyone? And if it's not, in what case is it not made for you? Crowdfunding is definitely not made for everyone, <laughs> even though I love it and I think it's an amazing experience that a lot of people should be experiencing. Um, but it's not made for you if you don't want to go all the way. I talked about that already quite a bit, but if you are, if you want to be just a game designer and if you want to just concentrate on that one aspect, crowdfunding is not going to be for you. It can be for you if you hire on a big team and and do it all together, right? Uh, but still, I mean, having a big team around you will ask some kind of uh, involvement from you anyway, right? So in that case, it's not for you personally. It doesn't mean that it might not be for your game. Your game might be good for crowdfunding. But if you want to stick to game design or art direction or something very specific, then I think working with a, an established publisher has a lot of uh, advantages because they're basically gonna uh, gonna take that away of you. It will come with some form of concession. You will maybe not have the full control about your game idea or what it's gonna look like or when it's gonna release. Um, but I think that might be worth it for not having to deal with accounting rights. Uh, I sometimes have people that come to me and say, oh yeah, but it's really complicated to do accounting. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. because accounting is an actual job right yeah. it's an actual people are actually uh studying that they're they're spending a lot of time in that it's a real position in the uh, companies so yeah obviously it's tough and it doesn't mean that you are not able to do it it just means that you need to have the will to do it so if you want to stick to game design that's awesome because then you're probably uh excelling in your job and that's what you're best at and maybe you're not a great accountant and that's totally fine right <laughs> then i think it would not be a good fit to go into crowdfunding but it can be very tearing it can be very exhausting um, and it can take an emotional toll on you if you're not full into the entire adventure um, and also i'd also say that crowdfunding is a lot about about innovation and about proximity with people. Uh, and if that doesn't fit to your project, right? If it's not a project that can be kind of built into an adventure, I don't think crowdfunding is the best uh, best fit there either. But then again, it's just a sales channel like other sales channels. It's a bit particular, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, it needs to be fit onto the right product and the right situation. Okay, so I think um, we can end here for today's video on the subject. If um, creators or the other people who are watching us today had to um, remember one thing from all that we talked about today, what would it be? I'd say remember that that's gonna be your adventure and you can inspire yourself a lot with what people do out there but it's never gonna be exactly the same. Okay. Uh, it's always gonna be a part of innovation in there so make it your own make it your own adventure uh and yeah then just go for it right go all in well thank you for being with me today thanks thanks so much for having me here celine <laughs> okay i think i know where to start now i need to work on my quotes and find my own why i'm so excited to start my own crafting journey and that's it for our first video from our crowdfunding consulting series. But because I have other questions to ask you on crowdfunding, next time we'll talk about the right platform to choose for you and why it's important to have a tabletop dedicated crowdfunding platform for the board game industry. If you have any other questions on where to start with crowdfunding, feel free to leave a comment under this video. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to our channel to follow our crowdfunding adventures. Until then, keep playing games and we'll see you soon. Bye bye!